Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another Geek Culture Congress. I'm your host, as always, Louis Speedy Jr. Gonzalez, and hopefully I will be accompanied by uh, the very f- uh, great and talented and funny Mr. Tarek Lewis. Uh, Joey Franchise is walking in right now, getting ready for, for the uh, show. What's up, Joey? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, we live, we live. No more, no more pre-shows, no more pre-shows. It was a waste of time. <laughs> uh, I need you to put, uh, yeah, hook up your headphones. Um, so uh, you could talk to our guest because he has us via Skype. Uh, oh, you we're, can. We're, oh, okay. Yeah, we have him uh, via Skype right now. Uh, his name is Randall uh, Begins Armstrong. Uh, is Begins a part of your name, or is that something for Facebook? Uh, it's for Facebook. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Originally, so uh, Randall Armstrong. Uh, we'll fix all that. <laughs> and then um, uh, he is, our, uh, I like to call it, my local comic book expert. All right? So uh, I... A little short story how I met Randall. Of course, he's one of Tarek's friends. He's one of Tarek's acquaintances from um, from a while back. And uh, the gentleman, uh, Randall, worked for uh, CBCS, right? That's correct. Yes. And um, and then if you don't know what that is, that is a company that um, uh, grades comic books. Kind of like, Joey, like um, like if you had a, um, a sports card and you send it off to get graded, yeah. and they put it in the plastic, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's dope, yeah. Yeah, so they do the same thing with comic books. So they okay. look at it and say, oh, the, this cover's wrinkled, or it's got tape on it, or it's got a, you know, and then they grade it accordingly, you know. Um, uh, if the white, the pages are white or dark or, you know, getting old, then they grade it accordingly, and then they encase it in plastic for posterity, and and sometimes if you have a really good copy, it increases the value. If not, at least, it, you know, you have it, preserved in whatever state it is um, until you decide to open it up again or, or you sell it, you know? Right. And um, that's how I met uh, this gentleman. So we always talked about uh, whatever we sit there and uh, I send books away. We always talk about other stuff. And I said, like, man, it will be great to have this guy on the show so he can really talk about, uh, you know, what inspires the movies and the shows, which is the comic books, right? Right, exactly. Because, you know, I haven't, you know... I, to not ruin it for anybody, I haven't really popped into comic book stores a lot. Yeah, same here. <laughs> but I heard there's quite, there's quite a few yeah. out this I, area. There's actually the one in Lutz. Yeah, that yeah, there's is, a lot. Is really, is mm-hmm. really good. There's a lot. So, Randall, uh, I'll let you go ahead and finish introducing yourself because you also uh, have your own store, right? Uh, as online only? Yeah, it's an online store for the time being. Uh, I used to own uh, another store uh, real briefly, a uh, brick-and-mortar store. I uh, had to close that up because of personal reasons, but uh, I'm back into doing it now. This time I'm doing online, but I'd like to segue it back into opening a, a physical location as well. Cool, very cool. Uh, see, I'm trying to make you louder here because uh, you're, you're really Oh, sure, sure. Low. I don't know why. Uh, let's see how I can do this here. Um, well, we'll just continue, and I'll just make you loud with the magic of, of internet. <laughs> with the magic of editing. <laughs> so, um, we can hear him, right? We can hear him just fine? Yeah. All right, cool. And, um, uh, of course, I have you on the show uh, to talk to us about Wednesday's always comic book, uh, new comic book day in the comic book store. So, today's Wednesday. So, uh, give us uh, what's going on in the comic book world. What's hot? What's happening? It, well, educate you know, us. I, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a few books that uh, I'd like to give a spotlight to. Okay. Um I don't want to show any kind of bias. Like I, I like all the publishers. Right. However, it's okay. You could be biased. It's okay. This is your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> this your is world. your show to sign. Just this is your oh, time yeah. to shine. Oh no! Yeah, I understand. It's just that sometimes, especially working in comics, and you're you're trying to offer books to people. Um, a lot of times, people will start second guessing what you offer them just because of your bias. You know. Right. That's why I try not to be biased because that way, I'm able to kind of just. Uh, make recommendations and then that way because uh, I've always been the type of person like I follow writers, I follow artists and uh, regardless of what publisher publisher that they're at and because uh, I'm about quality I like you know certain types of quality stories and the same thing with art and um, so once I get people kind of like on the on the same path, like on the same kind of like mindset right. um, people, people will usually uh, pick up those books and those titles Without even like second guessing it, they'll be like, "Oh, I know this is going to be good. Oh, I can't wait to read that." That's you know, and it's about just you know, I mean, every it's it's art, it's objective, so everybody has different tastes. Um, so that's why, that's why. But uh, what's hot this week, I think, in my personal opinion, um, several different titles: the new Buffy the Vampire Slayer comic book. Oh, new comics. Buffy the Vampire Slayer! You gotta tell me about that. Wow. Who's writing that? Who's oh. drawing that? 
Uh, in all honesty, I uh, I haven't had a chance to really dive into it. Okay, no, it's okay. So I, don't, I don't know who's writing and drawing, but I did manage to to flip through the book real quick because um, it just came out. Uh, and uh, I like the art. I dig the art. I think it's the same kind of quality of art that you get when um, when people have been picking up and reading the Buffy comics back when uh, it was with Dark Horse, but now that it's with Boom, and um, they're going right back to high school, so they're not conti- like Dark Horse had it set up to where the stories were the continuation of the characters after the show. So it was like season eight, season nine, um, with the current uh, new series that's out. They're back in high school. It's all fresh. So they're not um, doing that. Yeah, they did the season nine in comic book form, and they did, they, did that. And they can cont- that ended. Yeah, it was through Dark Horse. Uh, mm-hmm. The licensing ended right. with Dark Horse. Now right. Boom picked up the licensing for for Buffy. Okay. And so um, the first issue just dropped. Um, not long ago, I read somewhere that apparently the first issue is like essentially already sold out. Like it's already going into a second printing. So that's oh, wow. one of the, the issues that I think that's hot right now. That's Generally, really cool. Anything that sells out and uh, it goes into a second printing this fast, a mm-hmm. lot of times people want to j- kind of just jump on it and grab it just in case, just in case it, like, it, it soars up, it goes up in price. Um, you know, because then nobody wants to pay more than what they can get the book for. You know, if they can get yeah. it at cover price, right. you know, nobody wants to turn around and be like, oh my God, it shot up $20, $30, now I got to find this book and pay 20 30 dollars for it you know right is there a bunch of variants uh with that issue too this is a number one like a brand new take and what's the company uh boom studio yeah. boom studios okay and boom. i see that the um <clears throat> the executive editor is uh janine schaefer and the writer is actually jordy belair oh thank you thank you for looking that up no yeah. problem um yeah no um i'm personally not familiar with those names um they've probably been working with boom for a while um, other people might know that Boom Studios also makes the Power Rangers comics. We oh yeah, I, 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 they I, yeah. they need to put the that shattered, the yeah. shattered uh, whole story in a graphic in a graphic novel so I can read it all in one take. When are they gonna do yeah. that? That's what I want to know. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think um, it's probably gonna be in two trades because it crossed over with the the other Power Rangers title, which was the Go Go Power Rangers. Right. Uh, so it could be a combination. They might have put it all into one graphic novel, or they might be splitting it up into two like smaller graphic novels. Um, I'm I'm sure down the road they might even just combine all of it and put it in one big graphic novel. That way you can read the entire story. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. You know what's interesting um, about this uh, Buffy the Vampire? Uh, you know. The comic out. I, I've read that Josh Whedon is actually was actively involved uh, in helping develop the comic, and he's actually uh, putting together several storylines uh, for the for the Buffy seasons. Yeah, e- ever since um, he when they did the Dark Horse series, when they started uh, following it after the series ended, ever since that uh, happened, <laughs> uh, Josh has definitely been heavily more involved. Um, but yeah, he he's still involved. I think part of the reason they, they're doing this new Buffy series as well is because um, there's been talks of them rebooting the show, like either, um, you know, restarting it, like recasting everybody hmm. and then just having like a new Buffy. That's dope. Or, is, is this through CW still? Um, no, no, because I, I believe uh, originally it was 20th Century Fox that produced the show. Oh, OK. So, th- so there's a chance that um, Fox will probably want to either put it on their network or put it on FX. Well, that, or that they, might, might, they might shop it around, probably put it on Hulu. Okay. That, that might be Disney uh, soon, huh? <laughs> yeah, soon. That'd be, that'd be a Disney thing. Yeah. Oh, um, maybe. Well, you see, Disney actually owns a little bit of Hulu. Mm. So, like, anything that doesn't fall in line with their um, brand, they okay. usually probably put it through a different company. Okay. So, like, um, so essentially, like, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, you're going to find all of that on Disney+. Plus. Um, anything that's essentially rated R or anything that's kind of like maybe Fox related, it's either going to end up on Fox or it's going to like end up on Hulu. I think there's always a possibility. Um, I think there, whatever deal, whatever they had going on with Netflix, it's definitely done, especially with Netflix canceling like most of the Marvel shows. Right. So yeah, a lot of, lot of, uh, shenanigans going on between the two. All right, cool. So what else is happening in the, in the brand new, uh, comic book world? Uh, with comics also, um, 
Well, Buffy, I guess, has been the big one. There were, like, several variants that came out on that one. Um, what's the other one that I noticed? Oh, Naomi. Uh-huh. Naomi is through Wonder Comics, which is an imprint of DC Comics. So, okay. essentially, it's a DC comic book. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis is uh, writing it, along with David F. Walker, I believe. Um, now, another thing about this book that I think might be hot is um, Bendis loves creating new characters. Um, he did it over at Marvel. Right. He created uh, Miles Morales, and now Miles Morales is blown up with uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Um, even before that, kind of appearing in like one of the animated series, more and more people are starting to get to know him. Um, even like uh, with Jessica Jones, you know, uh, Brian Michael Bendis also created Jessica Jones. So I have a feeling that Naomi, uh, being this brand new character that he's uh, co-creating, um, it's going to be on that level eventually. Maybe not right away, but like maybe five, ten years from now, it might reach that level of uh, interest amongst uh, fans uh, and you know collectors and readers. Um, that's one of the great things about Brian Bendis is that he he's great with characters. He's great great with uh, character development, and so with this book kind of coming out, like I bought up at least several like extra copies. It never hurts to have a first appearance, you know. Mm. So that's my that's one of the books I'm definitely excited for. I think it's cool too because I guess the issue opens up with uh, her visiting Superman. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I was browsing through it, and by the way, the art looks really good like it was way better than what i was expecting um a lot of times when they do characters like this in independent books they like to usually go for like a different look or a different tone um but this looks real sharp it looks it looks way better than i was expecting but uh yeah i believe superman um i don't know if she's like there when um because i guess her character is in the dc universe so characters like that a lot of times they uh go through experiences or they go through a situation where like maybe a character is fighting another character and they're kind of like on the sidelines and they're seeing everything going down. Right. Um, so like as I was browsing through it, I did see Superman in there and, um, and uh, yeah, I was just really kind of blown away by the art. Like I can't wait to like really dive in and, and read that issue. Um, I've always liked Bendis. Um, I know towards the tail end of Marvel, um, because the man just, he's a writing machine. Like, that guy was writing, like, five comic books a month um, for, like, several years, you know? So, like, I feel like he was, like, the goose that laid the golden egg, and I feel like Marvel was kind of just draining him. And uh, so that's why, pe- towards the end, people were kind of just complaining about some of the stories that he was writing. They are like, oh, his writing isn't as good. Quality is not that good. And then now, it's it, and people were worried that when he came over to DC Comics that... That was, you know, he wasn't going to deliver like great top-notch quality, and so far people have been like very happy and impressed with what he's doing. Another book uh, that he's releasing through his imprint, Wonder Comics, is uh, Young Justice. That came out just like two weeks ago. Yeah, oh, uh, I saw that. So, the Young Justice looks pretty hot. Yeah, uh, Patrick Gleason, fantastic writer, very consistent. He's worked with an- uh, one of my other personal favorite writers, which is. Um, uh, Oh, man, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> it's okay, Peter it's Tomasi. okay. Peter Tomasi is his name, yeah. Um, Pete Tomasi is actually currently writing Detective Comics, and they're actually leading into Detective Comics issue 1000. That's getting ready to drop in March. And uh, lots of superstars. Kevin Smith is going to be one of the guys writing in that issue. Uh, I believe Bendis is writing one of the stories as well. Tom King, who's another big writer over at DC. Um, lots of great artists. Jim Lee is doing a cover. Um, it's gonna, that's going to be a hot book. Um, I just submitted my orders for that book, and uh, I wish I had more money to, bo- to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> well, really? hopefully, hopefully, some people will check you out after uh, this show, and then uh, you'll be ha- you'll be able to have some more uh, money to order yeah. some books, eh, for people, huh? Um, tell me what. Now, I want to stay on Naomi real quick because I know okay. that her character is actually like she had like. It, it, he's taking an interesting uh, route with this one, uh, obviously trying to bring the equality uh, within the comic book world because uh, her actually she has a her because of her sexual orientation also. So I mean she's I'm just reading here that you know she is you know of the alternative lifestyle. So is that yeah. is that being like you know is this like something brand new? I don't know if I don't know if Marvel or if anybody else have touched upon it, but is this the first time we're seeing this in 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 comic book. There was rumors. There was I, I I can't remember if they confirmed it or not because I'm I'm I don't follow Miles Morales that closely, 
but like when Ben is first created Miles Morales, they were talking about how he's supposed to be like you know uh, a mixture like half Hispanic, half black, and yeah. then on top of that, there were even rumors, and I don't know if they ever clarified it or not. Um, but it, he was supposed to be bisexual as also. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, like, uh, okay. Bendis is no stranger to, you know, like, creating new characters and kind of trying to bring in that, uh, trying to make it inclusive, you know, so that way other people, other readers um, can find a character that they feel like they can relate to based on, you know, their personal orientation. Very cool, very cool. What's new? What else is new? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Give me more. Oh, um, man. Guardians of the Galaxy number one. Ah, uh, yes, I saw that. He's got a whole uh, brand new lineup, uh, a Star Lord. Yeah, he's got yeah. some classic uh, uh, Guardian ga- characters. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider is right, there, which is uh, I did see that character that Donny Cates created. Um, the writer that's writing it, uh, his name's Donny Cates. He is like probably the hottest writer, um, and I don't mean in looks. Uh, <laughs> I mean like he's like the most popular. <laughs> he's the most popular writer probably at Marvel right now. Um, and uh, he doesn't just write for Marvel as well. He has one or two books, I believe, through another uh, publisher called Aftershock Comics. Um, you'll, in time, you'll realize like there's probably at least a dozen publishers out there. But, of course, the two biggest that everybody knows is Marvel and DC. Um, but Donny Cates right now, he's on fire. Um, like his na- you, could, you could put his name on any book right now, and I think uh, people will just pick it up just because he's writing it. Really? So, uh, okay. He's the, he's the new big writer now, and um, uh, he's writing Venom as well. You know, um, so from from Venom, he wrote he was writing Thanos, and I think they canceled it. Uh, Marvel has a really bad habit of uh, of uh, doing books and then canceling them and restarting them at number one. So uh, Punisher at this point has probably had uh, <laughs> twenty different series. I know. You know. And, uh, I can go on and on about it. It's frustrating. It's like yeah. I, I wish uh, I get that uh, Marvel loves these number ones and makes the money, but uh, I I personally like consistency. Yeah, look at DC. They kept on. They continued after the reboot with uh, the number order, huh? Yeah, they they also have a bad habit of uh, restarting their books, but not nowhere near as Marvel. Right. Uh, um. You know, usually they wait for like a big event to do it. So when they did New Fifty Two, which was really huge at the time like canceling mm-hmm. all of their books restarting everything at number one at the same time um that was really really huge for dc and unfortunately it kind of died down and uh and fans just weren't really happy with um the continuity and everything that was going on with the characters so um i actually um way back when i had my store i spoke to uh dan didio and uh, dan didio is one of the the head publishers over at dc comics and he had mentioned how originally when they uh renumbered all of the books the two books that they didn't want to renumber were action comics and detective comics they didn't want to renumber it they wanted to keep the original numbering but renumber everything else unfortunately his bosses said nope if you're going to renumber everything everything that means action comics and detective but uh very similar to like what marvel has done before they've gone back to like original numbering so they have gone back to original numbering with uh, action comics and detective comics and we and because they've been releasing a lot of these issues like twice a month, um, they were able to kind of speed up the process and get to the actual 1,000 issue. So Action Comics 1,000 came out last year. I believe that was the top wow. one comic book year 2018. <laughs> really? Yeah. And so, of course, we have Detective Comics 1,000 coming out in March, and that will probably also be the largest selling book uh, for the year. There's a chance. Wow. Cool. Okay, what else? Anything else? I, I did see something for Turok, a uh, Turok number one. Turok. Uh, I want to uh, shout out uh, that, Joy, uh, Tarek. No, I want to shout out Tarek Lewis. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, that uh, yeah. j- uh, just Tarek. joined us. What's going on, so, man? I thought you just mispronounced my name. <laughs> no, no, okay. no. Turok. You know, remember the remember the game from the Nintendo sixty four? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was epic. So, yeah. Uh, he, yeah. No, go ahead, say that again one more time. Which person? Oh, anybody. <laughs> Whatever you said, man. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we missed oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Turok, Turok's a classic character, man. Um, originally through Valiant, and then after a while, I guess the licensing ended. So I think the new Turok book is from a publisher called Dynamite. And um, I believe Ron Mars is writing that. Um, I do like Ron Mars. I became a fan of his from back in the mid to late 90s. He was writing Green Lantern. Uh, back when it was Kyle Rayner that was Green Lantern, Hal Jordan at the point at this point was dead from 
one of their events. On the parallax thing? And he was a bad guy? Was that it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I love that when Jeff Johns took over Green Lantern, he eventually kind of explained and he fixed how um, how he technically really wasn't a bad guy. He was just possessed. And it, it, it made it made uh, perfect sense. It, 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 it actually flowed and works with the storyline. So I like how they kind of retconned that. Uh, Jeff Johns, if some of you don't know, um, he is one of the all-time greatest comic book writers. Yes, he is. Word. Yes, he is. And he's all behind everything that's uh, happening in the DC Universe app and the the new Teen Titan, all the Titan show, all that stuff. All the he's movies. He's behind the movies as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, he, he was. Um, his position has kind of changed now. Um, he's no longer um, chief creative uh, officer. Yeah, I remember right. I did hear that. He's he's more of a he's a more of a producer now. So I think he's also one of the producers for the Sh- Shazam film. Yeah, he is, yep. Um, Which we just got the new yeah. trailer for recently. Yes, yes. Um, very excited for that movie. Um, I think DC's really made this huge turnaround. Um, uh, you know, I liked, personally, I like Zack Snyder. But um, with him kind of being absent, with him being gone now, um, now you have quite a few haters that have... Hmm. Um, quite a few haters that uh, can't hate on DC as much. You know, because all they could say was, oh, Snyder, Snyder, Snyder. Well, Snyder's gone now, so yeah. what kind of garbage are you going to talk now? That's right. You know, so yeah, they tried true. to talk bad about Aquaman, but Aquaman's made over a billion dollars. It's clear that people uh, enjoy the film. Yeah, it was a great movie. Um, it was. It was fun. I mean, to talk, oh. to steal something from another podcast, so Kevin Smith said it best. I mean, if it, they figured they do, let's just go all the way out, do the best Aquaman movie we can the craziest way possible with as many bad characters as we can possibly uh, uh, include, you know, oh, and yeah. and they did it, you know, just in case we can't do another one. <laughs> yeah. It's like when Lucky Charms put those extra marshmallows in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just throw it in there and worry about it. <laughs> All marshmallows. Yeah. We'll, we'll add new characters. We'll add new bad guys. We'll do whatever. We'll Purple fix- carburetors. Where's that? <laughs> Ken, are you starting a rumor that Lucky Charms is going out of business? No, 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 <laughs> no. General Mills, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> no, they just made a billion. Why would they do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I have a question. You were mentioning some other publishers that were up and coming. Um, what are some of those publishing companies? Oh, other publisher companies. Yeah, well, we have Aftershock Comics. Um, Aftershock's great. They do a lot of uh, independent titles, a um, variety of stories. Um, there's one story that's actually getting ready to come out, which is kind of like a, a vampire story that I'm I'm very intrigued about. I think it's a, a dark red or red dark or something like that. Um, hmm. That one I would keep an eye out for. But uh, they, yeah, they do like I said, they do a variety of stories. There's another series that they do called Dark Ark, which is kind of like touching up on the whole um, Noah's Ark, but hmm. you find out that there was another Ark, and the other Ark had like all the like more evil like crazy looking demonic creatures and and so like stuff that you know you you, you know it's it's an interesting take you know praying mantis had to be um, somewhere right <laughs> uh, the praying mantis and the, the dung beetle had to be somewhere they couldn't just right. be on a regular arc <laughs> yeah, well yeah it's just like you know all these just it, it, the art you know like it looks fair looks good um i'm just more intrigued by the story it's written by cullen bunn and uh, Colin Bunn, if you don't know him, um, if you ever get a chance to, this guy probably writes comic book villains or just villains in general. Like, he writes the best in comic book villains, in my personal opinion. He's written a, a Sinestro comic book series, which I thought was great. He's written a Lobo series. He's written Magneto for Marvel. Um, and just very just consistent and great. It, it, it's, it's always neat to see, like, a villain get his own series. Because the writers kind of get to explore their perspective, you know. Because a lot of times we're, we always see, like, the whole the whole hero aspect. Like, the heroes are, like, you know, you're seeing it from their, their vantage point, their, their point of view. And, um, and a lot of times you don't, you don't understand, like, what motivates the villains. Why are the villains doing this, you know. Magneto has become one of those great villains because he kind of feels justified and has that reason for doing all the bad that he does. You know, and so that's why, and people can kind of relate to that. And so they, they don't even, half the time or even like some of the time, they don't really view him as a villain. They just 
see him as an angry person who feels he wants justice and he's justified in, in the actions that he uh, he does. Yeah. Mm. Very cool. What else but, is uh, happening? Yeah, so like Tarek was mentioning, what other publishers are out there? Um, independent publisher, publishers that have been around for a while now, you have Dark Horse Comics. Yeah. Uh, Dark Horse is back in the like late 80s, early 90s. Um, they were doing like the Aliens comics, the Predator comics. Um, they did some licensing. They're m- they're most well known for doing Hellboy. Mm. Oh. Wars, the licensing rights. Obviously, once uh once Disney purchased Marvel, uh or excuse me, once Disney purchased Star Wars, and they already had Marvel, they were like, okay, it's time to bring Marvel back to uh, time to bring Star Wars back to Marvel. Um. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, but that's what mostly Hellboy's known for, for the longest was, like, Star Wars and Hellboy. And, um, and so now there, there's other licensing that they're doing as well. Like, Dark uh, Horse, Dark Horse. Just recently, they, re- they released a, they just started a four-issue miniseries on one of the characters from Avatar, the James Cameron film. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't even know that. See? Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I picked up a couple copies just in case because I don't recall seeing any other Avatar comics. So this could be the very first Avatar comic uh, printed. Um, I could be wrong on that. Um, hmm. But I'm a huge fan of James Cameron. I'm very excited for the Avatar sequels. Very um, cool. The man is uh, the king of sequels. And if, and fun fact also, the TV show um, Entourage. Yeah. They had James Cameron did that, and he was the director of the Aquaman film and that uh, their little Entourage series. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of neat. Very cool. But uh, yeah, other pu- other publishers, uh, Dark Horse is one of the older ones, older independent publishers. Image, of course, uh, a lot of people should know who Image, which uh, which publisher that is, because you've had like great artists like uh, like Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane. You know, hmm. when people think of Image or they think of independent books from the from the nineties, a lot of times the the you say the word Spawn, and they're like, oh, I know who you're talking about Spawn. You know, because you had Spawn who ended up getting a movie in the late nineties. Um, about to get another one. On getting, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jamie Fox, man, Jamie Fox, and um, what's his name? Uh, Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner will be one of the other actors in. Oh, the- really? really? That's dope. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be playing one of the detectives. I think his name is Twitch. Oh, oh yeah, I remember yeah. Twitch from the cartoon, yeah. the HBO cartoon. Yeah, had, oh. yeah, the HBO cartoon series. Uh, was it a uh, Keith David? Keith David right? has the voice of Spawn. Yeah. Voice? Yeah. I, I always wanted to see a Savage Dragon. You guys remember Savage Dragon? Ah, I like time? Savage Dragon. I got a number one Savage Dragon at home in my box Savage somewhere. Dragon. I always wanted to see Savage Dragon movie. <laughs> there, was a, there was a cartoon series of Savage Dragon. Was there? Was, I think a Saturday morning cartoon, right? Yep, on the, the USA Network yep. back in the day. Oh, I do remember that. Uh, probably yep. like mid-90s, mid to late 90s, there was Savage Dragon cartoon series. It wasn't on television for too long. It maybe like a couple years. Um, I remember just... I loved perusing through all the different channels and checking out all the different animation and uh, even Wildcats. There was a Wildcats cartoon series from Jim Lee. I do um, remember which I own that on DVD. Um, unfortunately, Savage Dragon uh, I believe is uh, the rights are owned by Universal mm. and at one point the, the creator of Savage Dragon, uh, Eric Larson, um, I asked him on Twitter uh, about the cartoon series and he said that he has no control over it that uh, it's all up to Universal. Universal has the rights, and it's up to them if they want to release it and put it on a, on DVD. But uh, the cartoon series was a lot of fun. Very cool, very cool. Um, okay, so anything else that we're forgetting? Anything else new happening you want to uh, talk as about? As far as comics? Yeah. Um, no, I think I kind of touched base on all the big all right. ones. I mean, the other issue that came out, because we were mentioning a Shazam film, uh-huh. there is a new Shazam comic book series that Jeff Johns is writing. Okay. Um, the second issue just came out. Uh, first issue, of course, came out about a month ago. Um, the series is interesting because it's really about the Shazam family, um, which I believe the the film looks like it might be heading that direction. If you have time and you check out the IMDb page for Shazam and you scroll through all the different actors that are listed on the film, um, you're going to see several named people that you're like, this person is not in the trailer. I have no idea. <laughs> Movie. You're just looking and, for spoilers uh, already, Randall. What's going on? <laughs> you didn't, I see? I think we got a new spoiler. <laughs> a new spoiler person. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Randall's going to but, the uh, credits. <laughs> it, 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 it's 
so it, a lot of it's all speculation, but I mean, some of those people might like appear at the end of the film with powers similar to Shazam. Um, the if you read the comics, essentially, the comics themselves are spoilers almost because you can almost anticipate what they're going to put into the film based on Jeff Johns's adaptation. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, you you have um, Billy Batson who is an orphan, and he gets in with a family with a bunch of other orphans as well. And so it's those group of kids, all the orphans, that they eventually end up all getting uh, abilities similar to... We refer to him as Shazam, but in the comics, classically, his name is Captain Marvel. That's right, yeah. And oddly enough, there's a Captain Marvel movie coming out in March. So I always like to joke with people. I'm like, what are the odds that we're going to get two Captain Marvels first time <laughs> on film in it's the a, same it's year? It's a great, yeah. to, a great time to be alive. I always say that. It's a two, great time two, to be alive. We're two Quicksilvers. <laughs> <laughs> we did already have two quicksilvers. Yep. Yep, we did. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Brandel, for giving us uh, the update on new comic book day, uh, what's happening and what's hot in the comic book shop. Of course, go to your local uh, comic book shop. And uh, Randall, go ahead and plug everything that is uh, your uh, comic book store. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I have a couple things I'll plug real quick. Okay. Um, I have a comic book group on Facebook called Comic Book Collectors League. Okay. Uh, it's a small group right now. But like we like to go in there and we we don't sell anything in there. We just talk about comics, people, and anything related to comics. So it could be film, television, video games. Um, cool. People posting like what they buy, what they've purchased. You know, kind of just you know, sort of like a show and tell, sharing what they've gotten. Cool. Can you do me a favor uh, and share this video in there? Because we need some more videos. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> later. <laughs> um, what else? Go ahead. There's that, and then, of course, like you said, uh, I have my uh, online comic book business. It's called Blank Variant Comics. Okay. Um, for the average person, they I always get this confused look on their face, like I don't I just understand. understand what a blank and, variant is, um, which so, is but for... for people who are into collecting comic books. Um, they understand when I say blank variants because there's a, a trend. I don't want to say new trend, but it's been going on probably at least between five to ten years now, where publishers are now releasing uh, comics with blank covers on it. Uh, with the popularity of comic book films and pop culture, uh, there's more comic book conventions that are appearing. And within these comic book conventions, you have local artists and uh, top name artists that actually offer commissions. Uh, by com my commission, I mean like they will draw on the book for a price, whatever right. you want. And uh, so, yeah, so blank covers have been around since then. And so I just thought to myself, hey, wouldn't it be great um, to kind of start a, a comic book business where I can offer comics, but at the same time, I kind of want to be like the, the main hub. Like if uh, your local comic book store doesn't have a blank cover that you need for a commission, um, you can go right over to blankvariantcomics.com and pick up what blank variants I have in stock. Very yeah, cool. So it's still in the beginning stages. And uh, and then it also, if you uh, live locally, uh, I'm offering great deals and discounts in Tampa, St. Pete, uh, Brandon area. Uh, I do 30% uh, off on comics if you prepay. Uh, if you don't prepay and you just wait for the books to come out, I offer 25% off. Um, there is no limit. You can say, okay, I only want one book, no problem. You want 10 books, 50 books, 100 books, no problem. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so uh, hang out with us while we uh, talk about us, uh, wrap up the show with some other uh, topics. Um, Joey wasn't here to uh, get in about glass. Did you actually yeah, catch it? Yeah, I actually caught it. So it really give us good. your review and go ahead and spoil everything because we've already <laughs> watched it already. Well, okay? I thought it was the worst of the three movies. Interesting. Okay. Um, really didn't feel like a glass movie. I didn't feel like, I feel like they just regurgitated everything from Unbreakable to kind of bring everybody up to speed since the movie's like, 20 years old. Re re regurgitated? Regurgitated. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard that. Yes, I know. I know, I know what it means. I just haven't heard the word in a while. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I wasn't... Uh, I thought it was okay for, yeah? for what it was. I mean, I thought... What I, it didn't get cool to the end for me. I, I thought what was cool was the fact that, you know, they... You know, people were aware... There was a group, a, a secret society that was aware of these... Uh, superheroes per se yeah i didn't like that and i didn't like the sending off i of, thought that uh, i thought that was cool in a sense because it was just like oh like that was the, like the little twist of the movie and yeah. i finally got some like oh, like a oh my god moment yeah. so i was cool like I, I was that was like probably in my so opinion did the best you feel part. like you wasted your money joey uh, you could have watched this on netflix later i could have um 
Yeah, it just didn't feel wasn't happening it, for you. It didn't really do it for me. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, that was a really that was probably uh I'm glad I did not share that one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We did get the hookup to get some movie previews. So oh, yeah, check did? it out. Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw the, the pre- yeah, yeah, I saw before yeah, anybody so else. I won't send this link to them. <laughs> ah, the beauty of working during the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Randall, have you checked it out? No, no. Um, actually, I haven't even seen Split yet. Dang, I just oh, spoiled man, the movie for man. him now. Uh, why, oh, why, why have you do that, he, Speedy? If he's not in it, he's not in it to see Split. He's not in it. Right, yeah, Randall? I, mean, I, I, do, I do eventually do want to see it. Um... I think the problem with this film was there was just too much hype, you know? So, I mean, a lot of times when there's too much hype for a film and you go in there and you have all these expectations yeah. and then it doesn't live up to those expectations, of course you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, very much so. I'm sorry. Bruce Willis is just washed up. He, he was pretty old. He's so washed. Well, he's an old man, though. Yeah. He's old. I mean, he's Morgan Freeman's older. old and still kicking ass. <laughs> Dude, that's how you see Morgan Freeman's legs, though. <laughs> Let me show Morgan Freeman. I mean, does, at this like point, skeletor? does Morgan need does to really skeletor? stand? You get, you get past that little button in the tie. Yeah. That's it. Dog. You don't get no more. I mean, does he really wow. need to stand? He can he just doesn't. sit down in a chair and yeah. just do his thing. You can watch the back of Morgan Freeman's head and just hear his voice. <laughs> For real. Now, now you want me to see a, like now you're giving me the idea like I want to see an action film with starring Morgan Freeman. I would. <laughs> like it. I would too. I, I thought yeah, I. He's a cop. With a gun, and he's like just one miners after another, one after another. Well, if, it will be if called, they if they recast X Men, I would say, hey, oh, shave that head and be at Professor X, X-Men. change, uh, switch things around Robert a little bit. Freeman as Professor X, yeah, that'd be interesting, wow. a little different, interesting. interesting. They could, um, the they could, I think would be good. The they can make another Olympus movie. Would, yeah, you would have a lot of butt hurt fans. Yeah, like wait a minute. <laughs> Oh my God! Here we go to political correctness. I'm just going by the voice, like I, yeah. you know what I mean. Like he would sway me to go to Xavier's, you know, school. Yeah, but he wouldn't scare Magneto and be like, "Magneto is coming to destroy us all." <laughs> you don't sound. But like, now, oh, what was man. now? What was the movie about the Jersey high the, the the high school in Jersey? What was it Lean on Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on, if you, come on. You told me what you doing, Magneto? <laughs> you're killing yourself. All right, yeah, so... you do. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't we we won't di- dive into more. Um, of glass on yeah. the part of me and Tarek. So yeah, we might not need to revisit yeah, yeah, I don't need to revisit it. I think uh, I, I thought it was okay. Yeah. So it was all right. Yes, for what it, it was. was okay. It was the worst of the three movies, but yeah, it, it was all right. It it flowed. Right. You know. It was all right. Go see it, Randall. A good... There's nothing else out. Nothing else took Captain yeah. Marvel, so might see as well. Split first. Split is a great movie. Yeah, Split was really good. Oh. Yeah. You might want to wait, wait for Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> be honest with you. Wait for that Netflix special? Yeah, just, yeah. you know, don't rush. I heard Hulu don't run. Prices. Don't run, okay? It'll be on Hulu. <laughs> I got to ask one question about this since you brought up Netflix. What do you think about Netflix's prices going up? I already feel like I'm going to take a break on Netflix, save a little bit of money, and then come back later. How much mm-hmm. is it? I mean, I really don't pay well, for an account. T-Mobile I'm, I'm stealing, pays for my Netflix right now. so <laughs> I'm, stealing my, I'm stealing my sister's account right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't got to worry about that. By it. Yeah. I'm not even sure the person whose account I'm on is still alive. <laughs> I got in oh. I got in early. No, I think it's going up like a dollar ninety nine or something like that, which is not people aren't really gonna feel that. I think yeah. they're I think they're gonna stick with it. I'm okay. okay. Most people will stick with it. I think it. the shows are really keeping people hanging on too. They're putting out really good films and really good uh series on there too. I wanna watch this the the show You. Oh, it was great. And I saw the um uh, they did the. Uh, I really want to watch that documentary on the uh, the fire fest. Yeah, yeah, I heard that was really good. Yeah, I watched. Um, I, I wrote a little review about the Devil Man Crybaby. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, on the uh, Geek Culture Congress Facebook page, which you haven't liked that yet, please go do so. And it was completely disgusting, but I uh, enjoyed it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that. You <laughs> and know, I was trying to eat fin- dinner too while I was watching it. So well, it you make you make a lot of mistakes when you watch. <laughs> But I, I know they're losing these Marvel shows, but I was and I was really upset about that. But now I'm like, man, you was so good. Um, they had this movie I O. I haven't watched it yet, but um, you know uh, the guy who plays uh, Falcon is right. in it. Anthony oh, Mackie word. is in it, um, and the girl yeah, from uh, I saw that. That looks good. Leftovers. That looks good. And they keep coming up with original stuff that I um, you know, I I might I would stay on just for original programming. What happened to Monday was great, hmm. you know. Hmm. So. Yeah. Netflix is in there with the original yep. program. We're into me and Tarek are kind of midway through Punisher season two right now. Right, yeah, we'll, we'll be having and Punisher. we'll have we'll have some. Are you into Punisher? I haven't right? into it. You're not even in it. What about you, Randall? 
I am behind. Ah, so he's behind. Uh, I, I joke with my friends all the time because I was always big on to anything comic book related. I'm on top of it. I watch right. every episode, mm-hmm. every series. Uh, but I joke with my friends now, and I say, man, if I can just tr- time travel back 10 years and tell my younger self, there's just too many for you to watch. Wow. It is. It is. It's way too much. It is. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's hard to take in. This is why it's I enjoy I enjoy the Marvel movies a lot more. Um because it's like you know, it's just it's just so much to take in, and sometimes it's just too much dialogue. Like Jessica Jones had way too much dialogue for me to kind of like <laughs> really enjoy, because I feel like I mean, the entire show is just her, you know, chasing after this dude that she probably could have killed like eight times. Yeah. yeah, Punisher season two is a lot more of that. Yeah, and I realized at some point, at some point during Gotham, that I was just watching New York Undercover. Yo! <laughs> yes, and I, <laughs> I bowed out. Yes. All right. <laughs> I, I wish I could understand that reference. I never really watched New York. Wow, Undercover. boy. You're, well, Wait, probably before your time. Yeah. I, I know what you're talking yeah. about, though. I know exactly what he's talking about. I grew up on New York Undercover. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, what else? Oh, I, I did enjoy uh, Titans, the, sh- the DC Universe show. That was pretty dope. I finished I got, that whole I, season. I, you know I heard that's coming to Netflix. Yeah. But it's I think it's Only Euro. Euro. I think it's Euro. Euro. But Only hopefully Euro that can Spain cross over yeah. and they can like take advantage of the fact that Marvel is you know, leaving. And slide right in. I don't know. I think they want to make all the money. There's a couple things I want to mention on that. Um, So DC Universe, uh, their own streaming app, which I have. I I very much enjoy it. Um, They're making all of their own shows. What's great about that is that you don't have networks. You don't have other executives getting involved and talking about, you know, hey, uh, we want to see this. We want to see that. No to this. No to that. They have the complete creative freedom to make their shows right um, which is what i love about it it's all about creating new content now why is titans on netflix in europe it's because dc universe is not available to people in europe at oh. least not yet they want to work towards that so in the meantime for all the other dc fans around the world um they made a deal with netflix so netflix actually pays warner brothers possibly even dc U- universe um they probably pay them for the rights to air um titans on Netflix uh, across the uh, Europe and the other uh, countries, um, but the other thing too about Netflix, the smart thing that they do, they did, and you may not know this. A lot of people I think don't know about this yet. One of my personal favorite writers is Mark Millar, and uh, or Miller, however you pronounce it. I always say Millar, and um, he had his own uh, he has his own characters, his own publishing line, so to speak. Uh, called Miller World Comics. Well, Netflix has purchased Miller World Comics. They own his characters. They own Kick-Ass. They own Kingsman. They own all of that. Mm. And I so did see that. They actually, came, he came up with something, some magic uh, comic book that I actually went to the comic book store and yeah, I bought. Magic Order. Yes, yeah, the Magic yeah. Order. Yep. And so he's actually working for Netflix now. So everything that he writes, every every new character, everything that he comes up with, it's all owned by Netflix. Netflix plans to turn and adapt a lot of their stories uh, into both film and television. The biggest news, and I think it dropped earlier today, and Mark Millar announced it on Twitter, he is working with Sandra Bullock. She will be one of the executive producers for the Reborn film. And Chris McKay, who, um, I forgot which film he directed, um, but he's supposed to be attached to direct the Reborn film uh, based off of his comic, uh, bu- comic book. So, um couple big names right there that are already on on one of his properties that Netflix uh, plans to put out and release. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So uh, I want to talk about what's coming out in February because we're at almost near the end of January. And I want to do something new that I actually just thought of a little while ago. And I want, uh, the bomb or will it bomb? Mm, okay. Okay? okay. All right. Uh, so this is what's happening coming out in February. Okay. February 5th, we have X-Men Dark Phoenix. That's Joey. February 5th? Yes, February 5th. No, it's not coming out. No. Huh? Dark Phoenix is not until June, Dark, right? Yeah, Dark, Phoenix. Dark Phoenix is not until the summer, Dark, dude. I have Dark Phoenix here February 5th. I don't Ooh, know why. Ooh, somebody lied to you. You looking at the shoot date? When it, <laughs> <laughs> February 5th, 2016. This, this, this internet, this, this uh, page is not working. Now. Okay, so let's skip that one. Um, then it is coming out. Bomb. It's going to bomb. <laughs> Dark Phoenix? Dark Phoenix is going to bomb. Randall, yeah, uh, already, uh, so much let's just run with it anyway, even though it's not coming out in February. Joy yeah, Franchise. Simon, Dark Phoenix? Yeah, yes. Will it be the bomb or will it bomb? Uh, I think it's going to bomb, to be honest with you. 
I think people are already be, calling it a disaster. So oh wow! I think it'll be a small poof. I don't a think it'll bomb. <laughs> I don't think it'll also be the bomb. It'll be somewhere in between. I I'm gonna go with, with Tarek. I think it's gonna it's be somewhere like in a, limbo. There, it's like a fart, but like the quiet one. <laughs> yeah. I, I would agree with Tarek that it's a small poof if the internet didn't exist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The, the, internet exists. the fanboys are just going to kill them. Yeah. It's going to be oh. it's going to be murder. The Sentinels aka <laughs> it's going to it's going to be the revenge of the Sentinels. Yeah. AKA the nerds. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um let's move on to Alita Battle Angel we got. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Jared, Joey, before he go, he's got to start a show, and I kept him here longer. I feel uh, bad. I like to call this Real Player One Part Two. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say bomb. Bomb. Wow. Yeah, <sighs> I, uh, I'm literally like on the line. I'm on the fence. Um, when I first saw it, uh, originally it was supposed to come out uh, last year, I think, and then they they pushed it back to February. Um, so had it come, had it came out last year, definitely would have bombed. Since it's coming out in February, and there really isn't, uh, I think, a lot of big films coming out in February. I think it has a shot. It has a chance at, at doing well, especially when you have Robert Rodriguez uh, directing it, and then James Cameron is one of the producers on it. So it all depends on how they market the film. If they market the film, if it, it improves in the next month, then I think it will be a a decent success. Um, if they don't market it well, absolutely it'll bomb. Hmm, interesting. I want to say poof, just because it's, it it can yeah, do it can do bad, bad in February. Bad. You know, it yeah, it's not, it does, it's not battling with any, any other movies, and people like to see something new. I think it'll be it'll, it'll be all right. I think it's it's going to be another the the fans if they don't like it are going to tear it apart, which uh, you know is yeah. is a given with anything. So. Um, is the Prodigy? Is that the uh, pseudo Superman ch- movie? I don't think that's the new. Not, is that the name of the one? I don't know. The that's, Prodigy. Yeah, Prodigy oh. is kind of like um, is it uh, his young son? Is a young son disturbing behavior so that he has an evil supernatural force that's yeah, taking him? Yeah, no, this him? is the really smart kid. Mm, this okay. is the really smart kid. Right. So I just saw the trailer for this hmm. recently. Oh, this is in our scope of our show. So what do you say, bomb or I'm the going bomb? to say. The bomb yeah. for what it is, which I think is going to be a horror film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which the film. margins on horror films are a little different, you know. Right. I think it'll be a decent horror film. What do you say, Randall? Um, since I haven't really heard much on it, it probably means that the marketing is weak on it. So I'm going to say it's going to bomb. It's in February too, so I think it's going to be a poof. Yeah. You know, Randall said, yeah. since I don't know about it, it must be <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Lego Movie too, the second part. I think it's gonna be hilarious. I think it's gonna be the bomb. It's gonna be the bomb. It's gonna make a lot of money. Yeah. But like the Incredibles too. Like I didn't think Incredibles two was that good, and everyone loved it. But it wasn't really what? that good. No, I didn't. I was not crazy about Incredibles two. It was like thirty uh, minutes of Jack Jack. Okay. <laughs> How long is he gonna fight this little squirrel? I I actually enjoyed Incredibles two better than the first one. Oh my god. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, what do you say about Lego Movie two? I like the Lego the one. Bomb? I think it'd be bomb. Yeah. Cool. It's cool. I, I like the Lego movies. Lego Batman movie was awesome. The first one was cool. So. Very cool. I think that's it for February. Uh, Valentine's Day. We're talking bomb or <laughs> yeah, All Star Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> what Valentine's Day? <laughs> we going to NBA All Star Weekend. Yeah, NBA All Star Weekend. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh well, I want to thank Science- Randall uh, for. Uh, j- uh, sh- oh, go ahead and say what you want. There's a lot in science fiction going on at the All Star Game. There's a lot of fake women. <laughs> <laughs> Fake ballers, <laughs> fake ballers, yeah. Deal with fake stacks, one hundred, <laughs> fake, fake, fake uh, bottles. You know, fake liquor will be up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, I think uh, this upcoming February definitely won't be anything like last year February, because we know what came out last year February, and of course that being in the news uh, again for the Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, this February I think is going to just be weak compared to last year. But Lego Movie Two, I think might might. Save the month? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Well, I, mean, I don't think it's going to do Black Panther well. No, nah, um, no. It's going to make money because kids are going to go see it and it's going to be funny, I'm sure. Yeah. I almost can guarantee it's going to be funny. I mean, it's the same directors that just did Into the Spider-Verse, right? Uh, well, you know, it's funny. I don't think both of the directors uh, directed uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I think one of them was a producer and writer. Mm. Uh, Gentleman, that was a, the director of Spider into the uh, into the Spider Verse. Interesting. Uh, but those those guys do a combination of both uh, producing and directing. 
they were originally supposed to direct the Han Solo film. Mm. Uh, and right, and they got Solo, fired. Right, right, and Ron Howard took over. That's which, right. Either way, like I, I, I love Ron Howard. Every time I see the Solo film, I don't really think of it as a Star Wars film. I think of it as a Ron Howard film, and I think that's part of the reason why I enjoyed the film so much. Mm. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the guys that worked on the, the Lego movie, like they got tons of stuff in the works. I kind of wish... Had they not uh, went to Disney to do the solo film, they would have made the Flash movie for the DC Extended Universe. Hmm. And uh, those guys deliver pretty good quality, and uh, it would have been neat. It would have been neat to see what kind of Flash film they, they would have made. Yeah. Hmm. yeah been it's crazy how that went on ice, and they made, like, Shazam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to do something with these lightning bolt outfits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent the money. <laughs> I think DC is just trying to make characters uh, because both Marvel and DC sometimes have similar characters. So they're, pro- they're probably looking at their characters and they're like, we better make this character before they make this character on film because then everyone's going to say we're copying Marvel. Yeah. When they, they probably want the reverse. They Fair want enough. it to be like Marvel copying DC. Yeah, right. Marvel does Sentry and then they do Shazam. It's going to be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So um, I think that's it for today's show. I uh, want to thank Randall. Uh, Armstrong for joining us. Uh, go ahead and drop um, your socials real quick if anybody uh, wants to follow you. Oh yeah, um, I, I mostly am on uh, Kyle Book Collectors League. If you're doing Twitter, okay. Um, it's uh, at the CBCL on Twitter. Uh, okay. And uh, at the on Instagram, it's actually literally typed out uh, Kyle Book Collectors League, but with the bottom dashes in between each word. Um, so that's for me on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Facebook. You can just find me on, uh, the Facebook group, uh, combo collectors league. Uh, or also you can go to the like pages of uh, combo collectors league and the like page for uh, blank variant comics. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so of course, Tarek what's going on in your world. Go ahead and drop everything on projects you're working on. I just uploaded some new videos that nice. on YouTube and, uh, check those out. Um, the YouTube is just my name. The, okay. It was actually the Tarek, Tarek Lewis and my, Instagram is my name is Tarek, and my Facebook is just almost none of your business at this point. <laughs> oh. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Any stand-up uh, dates? I don't I have, a, I have a tentative date on the 16th. I can't really talk about it. All yet. right. Sure what's going can't on. talk about it, but talk hopefully the it. after party is back where I'm DJing <laughs> at, because this guy over here, yeah. he was in rare form. Yeah. I was turned up. Oh, man. Yeah. Super rare form. I try and push him, had you know? had a bad one with him, too. I try to push him and pick foot with him so he gives me some punchlines, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but he, he gets him in there. He gets him in there, you know? Uh, Joey, what's going on with you? I'm currently on the air right now. That's right. They just did my first bad. break before Completely going into commercials. Orlando, so I'm, going I'm sorry. Back there. <laughs> 7 to midnight, Monday through Friday, Wild 94 1. All right. And of course, you can follow Mind Eternal Life as a DJ D- at DJ Speedy JR. And if you're not following Geek Culture Congress, why are you even here? Go follow us right now. <laughs> Geek Culture Congress on Instagram. Like the Facebook page. We're always live there before we go. We put the audio on the podcast feed. And, of course, we're on the wild941.com page, 92.5 Maxima page. Thank you so much, uh, Randall. Anything else you wanted to say, Terry? Thanks, Randall. We appreciate you, man. Thanks, yeah, Randall. Man. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it, man. I love it. All right, great, man. We're going to have you uh, as many times as we can, hopefully on New Comic Wednesday, and then whenever uh, you got some free time and you can chime in with us through, even if it, we have to do it through Skype, okay? Sounds great. I appreciate it. Thank All right, no problem, man. All right, thank you. There's another Geek Culture Congress in the books, my friends. Peace. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye.